What's going on, Detroit Lions fans? Man, what a one-sided ass whooping. I think that the stat of the day that is crazy to me, and I don't know if anyone else has brought this up, it is the first time that I can think of, and if you are a stat head or anyone who knows, let me know, that the Detroit Lions special teams had more yards than the offense. Okay, Khalif Raymond had 190 yards in kick return or punt returns, and Dorsey added in another 72. To, so 262 yards in special team yardage. And the offense only, ever, uh, only had 225 yards. I don't think that's happened before. I don't know if anyone's noticed it or if anyone's talking about it. I haven't heard it anywhere else. I was just looking at the box score. Uh, I wanted to see how many yards in the return game that uh, Khalif Raymond had and then Dorsey. And I was like, dang, they had 260. Then I looked at the total offense, 225. So if I'm the first one to say it, let, let me know if that's the first time that's ever happened in an NFL game, especially in a game where – the team on both sides had 52 points, but this was just a uh, complete domination. And, and honestly, I'm not surprised. Look, um, hats off to the Titans, man. They did some things really nice. They used Calvin Ridley. Uh, they were good as, at, at times getting the ball out fast. I'm going to try to, in my post game shows from now, on, I'm going to try to give some, some credit to the, to the teams and be respectful. Um, I, I think the Titans did some things really well. Uh, offensive line wise. I, I didn't, like what I saw from the Detroit Lions defensive line, but I'm not going to get into that. But and this isn't a Titan show, but um, I, I think Tennessee is going to be trending in the right direction. This is going to be a really bad year for them. Okay, get that number one pick in the draft, get in the top five, build your roster out, get some playmakers, add some depth, um, follow the Brad Holmes mold. Okay, follow his model for how he's built the Lions. That's my advice to Titans fans. Weather the storm, you guys will be okay. Um, this was just one of those games, and I'm not really surprised by anything. I did my my pregame show. I kind of called everything that I think was going to happen. I said I thought it would be a blowout. I said I think we see Hendon Hooker the entire fourth quarter. Uh, it was just a one-sided whoop. But defensively, some things I like, some things I don't like. I like that this Detroit Lions team is attacking the football. All right, If you make a catch, you better be really uh, – really honed in on your ball security because of Meek Robertson today, forcing two fumbles, Kirby Joseph with another interception, uh, forcing four turnovers today. On top of that, you, you get four turnovers and you play good special teams. You're, you're set up really nicely. Okay. Uh, I think that's just how the lions, I don't think that's how they drew it up. I think that's just kind of the way it came in. And um, we're just attacking the football. All right. We're, we're punching it out. I like it. We're group tackling. We got guys flocking to the football. You, you catch it. We're going to be on you. You better have it covered up. Uh, you better not hold it out for any extra yards because someone's going to try to punch that ball out and give us an extra possession. So I love how we attacked today uh, from that aspect. I loved how we established the run in kind of a way. Jameer Gibbs with his longest touchdown as a Detroit Lions 70 yarder, one play drive uh, right to the house. Man, it was just a fun Lions game to be at. There's really not much to say because it was really one-sided. But just looking at the stats, some stuff that I found interesting was um, Tennessee had us almost doubled up in plays. They had 71 plays. We had 47. This was just a, a game of those turnovers were just crippling for the Titans, and the Lions capitalized on every single one. Um, they had more yards per play, 5.9 to the Detroit Lions, 4.8. Uh, more passing yards. Jared Goff only had, what did he have? 85 passing yards. I mean, he didn't break a hundred and still threw three touchdowns. So just, uh, this was a very, very good complimentary football game. Um, offensively, we got the ball extra times. We executed, scored, put, put it away. Defensively, we attacked the football, caused some turnovers, special teams, monster day. Khalif Raymond, looking at probably special teams player of the week, maybe the I would give them the month right now and just call it a day. Um, this was just a complimentary football game. All three phases dominated all three. Uh, the scoreboard's the only one that matters, though, and we dominated that that as well. So at one point, this game was 14 to 14, I believe, and we just really ran away with it, scored 38 unanswered points. So um, this is just kind of the kind of game that, what I wanted to see was I, I said that this game was a an audition, all right, a, a chance for some guys, mainly on that defensive line, to get some reps. Uh, I want to save some stuff for tomorrow's episode because I don't like to talk negatives on a, on a dominating win like today. But um, 
I'll just say that I'm not in love with this pass rush. Okay. There was a lot of guys out there. Um, Wingo, James Houston, just to name a few. Um, just this was an audition for you guys, Isaiah Thomas. This was a golden opportunity for someone to say, uh, I can be a contributor on this team and get a pass rush. I didn't see it. I just didn't see it. I saw that the very, very few times we had a pass rush, we made Mason Rudolph very, very uncomfortable and anxious. And honestly, maybe, maybe, maybe this is me just speaking crazy. But I think our lack of a pass rush made him anxious because he was anticipating someone being there and hitting him, and it just didn't come. Um, I don't want to get into that being any type of game plan because I don't think that's the road to go. But that's just kind of what I saw from sitting where I was at, at Ford Field. It seemed like Mason Rudolph, his internal clock was right for how a quarterback should be, you know, kind of get antsy at about two, three seconds, but the pass rush wasn't there. And I think as time went on, he got a little ang antsy at sometimes, but other times, man, um, he had a good, good connection with Calvin Ridley early in the game. And uh, I think we started to change up how we were guarding him. Not so much soft zones or, or soft man coverage. I think putting a, someone right in his face right off the line kind of made a difference too. But um, I, I, I'm not comfortable with how this defensive line looked. And this was the game for the defensive line to kind of, shine all right the tennessee titans offensive line their left side is okay with latham and skronic two first round picks they're trying to build their offensive line around them but the rest of it not very good um i, I thought that our defensive line didn't do much today against a banged up tennessee titans team that's at the bottom of the barrel of the nfl i'm not comfortable with how this defensive line is going forward i'm going to talk about some more stuff later that's really really my only negative about this episode um or about this game if in, in the early morning hours when i woke up if you had said that the detroit lions would only have 225 yards of offense there's no way in hell i could have guessed that we would have 52 points we executed though when we absolutely needed to man um, short fields all day. So I think that's, I know that's another reason why we didn't have a ton of yards. And if you guys have been following my channel and my philosophy, I don't care about yards. I care about points per game defensively and offensively. This was the most points for the Detroit lions, um, offense th so far this season, 52. And honestly, we probably could, have. You know, we left some drives out there. We left some some a little bit of meat on the bones. This this game, we probably could have gotten the 60s, but I think Dane Campbell did the right thing. You know, show a little respect to your opponent. Don't run the score up on them. But Tennessee was crippling themselves with the turnovers. It was kind of hard to, you know, not score, um, especially when you have a 70-yard touchdown. But um, and then defensively, we only gave up 14 points. So Tennessee, they didn't score a single point in the second half. Um, they scored Seven in the first, seven in the second, shut out in the third, shut out in the fourth. And Detroit didn't even score in the fourth quarter. So that's what I'm saying. Like, we easily could have got 10 more points. This game could have been 62 to 14, I believe. Um, this is an exciting, man. And what have, what have we won? Like four in a row? Something like that going into Green Bay, who's uh, – I saw Jordan Love got hurt. Don't know the extent of his injury. Don't cheer for injuries. I want Jordan Love to play. I want to see the Packers at their best. I want to play a Packers team. I want to battle. That's why we watch football is for the competition. It wouldn't be entertaining if you're, you know, if you're just a casual fan or even if you were just watching two other teams. You don't want to see a blowout. You want to see good competitive football. So thoughts and prayers with Jordan Love. All I know is that it's a groin injury. I don't know if it was a tear or anything like that. So I hope he's healthy. I hope he plays against us next Sunday. But um, I love going to work on Monday mornings after a Lions win. And I get to enjoy that for at least another week. I think the Lions are uh, – not many teams match up with the Detroit Lions, okay? And, and not getting too far ahead, still trying to keep this to just this game, but we're, we're, we're setting up really nice with the Packers. And I've said, I thought that this was a two-week audition for a lot of players against the Minnesota Vikings and the Tennessee Titans for Brad Holmes to and Dan Campbell to throw some defensive linemen out there, see what works. Guys, I, I don't see much that's working on the defensive line, okay? James Houston was absolutely ineffective today. Um, and I, I can't blame a guy like Isaiah Thomas for being ineffective. He was on a practice squad a couple weeks ago. Um, James Houston, a lot of people were thinking he was going to be the next great thing on the opposite side of Aiden Hutchinson. He hasn't done anything in two years, guys. All right. He didn't play last season. He hasn't done anything so far in 2024. Uh, I, I just can't buy into it. And I, and I haven't all season that James Houston's the answer. He calls himself the problem. 
The only problem I see is when he's on the field and his inability to generate a pass rush. Golden opportunity today, either going up against a not very good offensive line or a rookie left tackle, and he was able to do absolutely nothing. And I paid attention every single snap when he was on the field. You wouldn't even have known it if you weren't watching. Very ineffective, guys. I truly, truly believe Brad Holmes has to do something this week before Sunday's game against the Green Bay Packers. This cannot be the defensive line that we trot out every single week. And again, I'm giving you guys a little teaser for what I'm going to talk about tomorrow. Okay. I got to talk about some more trades. Unfortunately, it's just where we are. I really thought someone would step up and shine. I haven't seen it. If I'm wrong, please leave it in the comments and we can have a discussion. But uh, tape don't lie. That's all I'm going to say, guys. So another Lions win, six and one. Great day. Don't want to end the, the episode on a, on, a, on a negative note. I am truly in love with where the Lions are, six and one. We're in control of our own destiny. Got a big game coming up against Green Bay. Let's take care of business, guys. But we're victorious. Hell of a game. Hell of a special team performance. Shout out to Khalif Raymond, player of the game for me. Not even a debate. Stick around. Hit that like button. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll be back tomorrow.